Hello and welcome again to the Blueprint of the Universe. So we've been looking at the Blueprint of the Universe and having lessons on what, what it is, um, how it fits in with all of the systems and uh, kind of teachings within uh, the history of the human race and how we've tried to teach it from generation to generation, but it's been kind of lost in symbology really. Uh, and how we can use symbology to, to kind of expand our knowledge and find that information again and apply it to kind of modern day references uh, using more scientific methods. And so we've, we've been looking at um, the various stages of the um, blueprint of the universe based on various different things, such as the Kabbalah. And we... We saw in our last episode the idea of opposite reactions uh, to opposing force represented by the number two, uh, using number two or the two points as a symbolic template that we can overlay onto any any perceived level of reality uh, that we choose to study, be it the universe itself and the explosion and expansion and contraction of the Big Bang. Um, or on a atomic level of the contraction and expansion of atoms themselves to create the world around us. But equally on a human level of personality, we have different sexes of male and female. We have the inward and outward looking view. Um, but we've also applied it to various levels of uh, religion, mythology, and say scientific thinking. And it all come back, comes back to this blueprint that can be applied to every level. Now, today we're going to move on a step. as there's, there's 10 major steps to this uh, set of lessons. And once we add a level on, it seems to get a little more in-depth. And I, I don't want to go in too details. Each point can be really broken down and analysed. However, I want to just kind of put as many points as I can into this video to cover all bases and try and get you to think about what these symbolic references and actual counting or numerical system is. So today we move on to number three. Um, again, it might seem very straightforward, but the number three is an extremely important numerical value. And it's more than just that, it's a symbol, a symbol that can be applied to the universe. And the number three itself, let's just look at the number three. In modern terms, the number three is represented by uh, two half circles, but there's three points on the number three, if you've ever noticed. There's the top, the bottom, and the middle. And this is very important, as we'll see, is where you've got the two extremes and then the middle point, and it's the concept or the visualization of three points of perspective. So... We've been using this analogy of the piece of paper, and the piece of paper being the universal circle that represents everything in the field of study. So if we have a piece of paper and we ignore everything else around it, that becomes our universe. And we've drawn, we have drawn one point and a second point to create a line. Now, we again know that there is more than just two opposite forces. Again, we have a variety of items and products of study all around us. We have different books, different colours, different sounds, we have different materials. So we know there is more than just two forces in the universe. There is a multitude. However, we can begin by adding steps into this. And this next step is to place a third dot anywhere on the paper. So we have two dots with a line between and a third point anywhere on the paper. And if we now connect those three dots together we have a triangle so we have three lines and this is extremely important this is the next dimension of thinking and the triangle itself is considered our first real shape it's our first it's a two-dimensional shape on a flat surface and this is very important and um, again when we look at dimensions and uh, how the brain works but um, the number three coincidentally, is the second dimension, um, or two-dimensional plane. And on a mathematical level, the triangle has been studied for many, many, many years, thousands of years, and it's able to apply itself in all sorts of ways. Without the triangle or understanding the triangle, we would not have buildings, we would not have angles, we could not measure the distance between 
uh, one place and another properly. The third point kind of brings us closer to analysing the distance between the first two points. As we can say now that point, the new point, let's say point C, so we have A, B and C or 1, 2 and 3. Point 3 is a certain distance away from number 1, but also a different distance from number 2. And we start to create a map, and it's this kind of isotopic graph that we have that we can use to map our areas. Um, and so if you pick two points in the room and yourself, let's say um, the window and the door, we can say that I am so far away from the window, but I'm also so far away from the door, and the door is so far away from the window, and we can begin to measure and kind of have a perceived size of the room and it's very important you might not think it's something we take for granted but without this we would not be able to create anything in the universe and it's also how the universe creates itself because if we as people need this to create the universe creating itself in a natural sense of rocks um you know rocks uh, trees plants animal life buildings ground uh, all things energy matter it must have follow the same rules, the same structures. And that's why we have triangles in the world. If we look at crystals, for example, crystals are made of geometrical shapes and they all have triangular angles which can be measured. And that's just how you create uh, objects um, by measuring three different points. Now, what is important is that we begin to have angles and no matter where you put your three dots and your three lines, the inner side of all three angles added together create a circle. Uh, sorry, a, a half circle we create 180 degrees. And this is very important as it's half. It's half a circle, half a universe. And we'll look at this when we come to number four in the next lesson. Um, but it's it's half a circle and it's it's an extremely important ma ma mathematical angle to, to be able to have. Now, how does this come into the universal blueprint? Well, because it's something that exists in all things, it must also exist in the universal blueprint and must therefore um, be created uh, on every philosophical and, and kind of perceivable level. And what this does is we have two opposing extremist forces. We have the complete contraction and the complete expansion. However, when we look at other objects, we need to kind of see, well, actually, is it contracting? Although there's an equal and opposite force in all things, all forces have slightly different variations to create diversity. And we need to see that where is it on that time scale because some things will contract to a point where they're fully contracted and then begin to expand but how far along that cycle are they and it's that level of comparison that the third point is used for and a good concept of being able to see that is the use of color so we have black and we have white. But now we have grey, which is a shade in between. And now we can say, well, that third point, how black is it? Or how white is it? Is it darker or is it lighter? If I move it one way, does it become darker and closer to the black? Or does it become lighter and more white and closer to the white? It can never be completely one or the other because those positions are taken or it would be one or two. It is its own thing, it is three, and therefore must be different. But at what level is it different? And it's this idea of comparison that we really need to take and use symbolically. So when we use different atoms, every atom is slightly different. They all expand and contract, but according to its different levels of um, electrons and protons, for example, gives it a different strength, which is where we have the periodic table. And the periodic table basically tells us on the 
a layman's sense of how strong or how reactive each element or um, grouping of atoms are. And you obviously have the more reactive elements together and the least. So you have things like argon, which is a gas, which is extremely reactive. Or you have the solids, which is lead, which aren't reactive at all. And it's those opposites that are extremely important. So now we have a scale. We have the all expand and contract of a positive negative charge, uh, which creates the density. But now we have variations, or we can have variations because we can have different shades of grey. And it's this being able to identify now, but actually go, actually, yes, now I can begin to see that there are different stages and different grades on a level, and those levels can be quantified or at least separated into like a ladder. We have those at the bottom of the ladder, which are more dense. We have those at the top, which are lighter. And then we have those in the middle on every scale in between. And it's this concept of pre, perceived pre, that exists in every system of study in the universe. And once we delve into a couple, you'll think, oh, actually, yeah, that's it's everywhere. And that's what I want you to be able to do. I want you to look everywhere and see the number pre and see that now there is so many variations of number pre, but it's this concept that, all these old systems are trying to teach us. So I want to go through a few. And again, one of my favourite ones that is probably least well known is uh, is the Greeks. Again, looking at the Greek gods um, and the pantheon. And we looked at Zeus, which is, he has his thunderbolt, which represents number one, which is the singularity. And then we have his brother Hades, which is has the pitchfork with two points, which is, the number two and is the underworld, the two opposite forces that are always at war with each other, hate each other, but equally work together with each other. Um, but then you have the third brother, and we always seem to forget the third brother, which is Poseidon. And Poseidon has a trident, and that's his weapon, and it's a three pointed staff. A pitch, um, yeah, a trident, which is three points. So again, we have the number one in the thunderbolt, the number two in the pitchfork, and number three in the trident. Something that's extremely overlooked. And it represents the middle ground because Poseidon was the lord of the sea and the land. And that's earth, that's the middle ground. It's the balance or the non extremes of heaven and the underworld, or Olympus and the underworld. And it's everything in between from one to the other. And that's what it represents. It's this whole area of variety and um, relativity uh, that's so varied. Um, that's why he, you know, he is the best God, in my opinion, because he is the representation of all life, all things that aren't just one or the other, two extremes. And he sits in a mediumship position between the two brothers. As he just gets on with it, he's not really one or the other. He doesn't help one or the other because he's everything in between. Um, so we have other examples. Um, another fun one is in Lord of the Rings is Middle Earth because it's the Middle Earth. It's not good or bad. It's in the centre. Um, and it's to do with the human kind, which is, again, the middle ground because the humans are so varied in the nature, both physically and mentally, but it's everything between the two extremes, the extreme good and the extreme, extreme evil. Uh, in Christianity, again, we have heaven and hell and angels and demons, which are the representations of two opposing extremic forces in the universe. But the human realm is, of course, in the centre of that, and it is everything in between. And... That, that that's what it is, it's that middle ground, it's the number three. Um, again, uh, staying with Christianity, we have the concept of the three spirits, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is actually the mother um, and the female aspect, which is the contraction, because you never see, it's the space between. Um, so we have, God the Father, but it's it's the like the idea of the ex, like we said in the in the second lesson with the two extreme forces, we have the ghost which is behind the scenes, and then we have the everything that's in front of us, the universe, 
But then we have the Son, and the Son represents humankind. And the Son of God, Christ, was the representation of God on earth, which is humankind. It's also a sim there's many, many symbols for it, without going into too much detail, but the idea of Christ is that he represents humankind and all people are Christ or the King and that's the symbol of human race is that we are all part of that and it's that middle world between the two um, and 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 that's the point of three of the thing that we we can see the above and below because we are in the middle position to move around, whereas they are extremes. If you have two people placed at the extremes that are unable to move, it's the person in the middle that can move around between the two people and see more and experience more and live life um, and can see the two viewpoints of the others but are never of them and they have the best best kind of reality really because they can see multiple things and that's what humankind is and that's why in the stories of the bible it, it, uh, angels and the demons are jealous of the human uh, angels and demons are jealous of the human beings because they have their individual extremist viewpoints and are a unable to learn see or change anything in between it's the humans that can do that the human spirit Again, in Greece, we, um, in in Norse mythology, we have the three spinners, which are the three. The reason they can see fate or say time is because they are three points of perspective again, and that's what that teaches us: is the three points of view that can be used to measure all things. Um, in France, we have the fleur de lis, the three again, which is exactly the same. It's development of the the three concepts of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, and it's very much a concept of the family, um, you know, family, the king, and um, the home. It's the three versions of all things that can be seen to create the one. In alchemy and hemetics, we have salt, sulfur, and mercury. And the salt, sulfur, and mercury are the three concepts that can be applied. They're just, again, symbolic names. So the salt represents the more solid um, forms of uh, the extremist view, which is kind of the underworld side of things. Um, whereas the mercury is the highest side of things, which is the highest level of the human condition, whereas the sulfur is the energy in the centre. And in the alchemical sense, this could obviously be applied to the uh, atomic state, which we've already mentioned, that these solids being um, salt and Sulfur, the ones in between the liquids, and mercury is the gases. But that's also in the human mind as well. We have the more solid state, the materialistic. We have the, the higher um, mercury state, which is the kind of free thinker. And then we have the sulfur, which is the person in between, which is uh, a bit of both, really. And this can be extended into India. They teach in Ayurveda that there's three different body types but there's also three different personalities to match which represent the structure of the universe and that is the three doshas which is the vata the pitta and the kapha and that's to do with the type of person you are so if you're quite a big onset person you're obviously quite physical and therefore related to the more solid side of life um which is like the salt for the alchemists and um, the vata is again the more the more airy, the more um, the thinner person as it is, because they're more uh, less connected to the more solid realm, and so on. Um, so we can see that this happens again and again in the in China. There's the idea of the three major um, mythological emperors, Yao, Shan, and Ya, and they again are the same thing. It's the three the three emperors that rule the world because of the three viewpoints. Or the three perspectives that can rule the world in the best form because they can have three different perspectives which can, can create the best course of action uh, for the three rulers. This was applied in Western um, culture as well, even from the beginning of Mesopotamia and also Egypt, that there are three... This is something that I've written quite extensively about in my book, um, Our Sacred History and how this concept's passed 
down through rulership and through time and there is three concepts or three prime positions within government or any kind of ruling state there's the kingship or the warrior the warrior mentality there is um the priest which is the healer or the um the one that looks outwards into the future and the best course of action and then there is the prophet which is removed which in our case is number three you have the two opposites the king and the priest uh and in in um ancient egypt you did you had the um king and his vizier which was the usually the highest priest and those two ruled together uh, but oppositely uh, one faith one one um as the government as such which was more kind of warlike and um you know warrior warriors related whereas the prophet lived on the outskirts of the city and kind of watched what happens from outside and then came to impart wisdom when needed from um from outside and then he had the more outwards look he could prepare what was going on between the two and the shamans uh in in um well the shamans across the world really not just america um but they were they would live on the outside of the village and be almost um, kind of exiled really but they would live on the outside of the village because they would watch from afar and see the world from outside and see what's happening within the village and then they could make an outside judgment really like a third party which again was where the third party concept comes from but you had the chieftain and then you had the um the healer or the priest uh and then you had the shaman which was kind of an onlooker and the three worked together to create the best interests of the tribe in china again moving back to taoism you've got the the triagrams so you've got yin and yang again um the two extreme parties of one another the two opposite forces but then you have the grades between and they use the three triagrams uh, so you have a broken line for one and unbroken line for the other the two extremes and then having three lines you can create different variations of that by having three different orders of the same two lines you could have broken broken unbroken 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 broken you could have three broken three unbroken and you start creating variations then um of the triagrams and that's that's their way of of creating diversity and exploring the different kind of combinations within those three levels and again you have the three levels because it's the salt sulfur mercury or the solid um the solid uh, liquid and gas the three the three lines of separation between the measurements and the last one i'm going to touch upon is the masonic uh freemasons uh, again because it's all passed down from one to the other so it's going to be in every system if you look because it's in all things that's the point of these lessons but the masonic um concept of they have three tools that they use they have the plumb line which is the the line which is the points one and two um gravity and obviously the opposite heaven or you know the line from above and below but then they have the compass and also the set square as well which are two triangles which will come together to make the fourth square uh, or the squared circle which we'll look at in the next lesson um, but these three steps are there and they're passed on through these three, three tools again using the different angles to measure as the masons were in charge of creating architecture um, as well as architecture of the universe because that's what it's an applied symbology if you can build a building you can put the same concepts to understand the universe and vice versa which is why the blueprint of the universe is hidden in sacred spaces and specifically as well churches and mosques because the masons built them all and the masons understood the universe and were therefore able to recreate the measurements on earth into a sacred space even stonehenge and any stone circle of bronze age burial mounds the pyramids were all considered masons because they're using the measurements of the blueprint of the universe to create these spaces for symbolic purposes um but 
there is another thing as well that the three major officers within a lodge of the Freemasons have three lecterns or three seats, three thrones, and it's very important that we look at them because what's often missed, even by members, is that the highest, um, the lodge leader, the um, the, the the master, uh, would sit on three pedestals within underneath his chair and then the next member down would have two and then the lowest of the three would have one step to go on and that's because the first uh, first officer is closer to the bottom of the lodge the floor of the lodge and the rest of the people and therefore has the closest connection to the people but is one step above because he is on that first rung that first rung of the ladder or the, the salt level the solid level the second officer is one step above him and one step away from the rest of a lodge and one step closer to the um, lodge master. And he is on two steps before he gets onto his seat and the lodge master on third as well, the worshipful master, which he's on three steps there um, and furthest away from the lodge, but highest up to the heavens. And if we look at royalty, the king, the king's throne, all thrones usually have multiple steps, and traditionally they would have three. Um, and the more steps they are, the closer they are to the heavens. And that's the thing, again, passed on from the pharaohs. So the number three is extremely important, and it's symbolic, and it can be applied to all these different levels. And it's that if you think of your own personality from two extreme points of view, looking inwards and external, looking outwards, and then all the levels of perception in between. You don't always have an extremist view. You, you fluctuate between one and the other according to where you are in life. And it's this. But usually you're either heading towards one or heading towards the other. And you can see that by looking at how far away you are from the opposite factor. So what, what I want you to do, take from this lesson, is to just look at everything. Look, look at all things around you. And once some of, take some of the references you've used from the first, uh, from the lesson of number two of looking at two extremes, and now try to find the middle ground, or look at different atoms, look at the periodic table, or even when you're cooking, look at the solids, liquids, and gases, and how the middle ground, the new number three, the one in between, actually becomes a medium to help the other two exist. So. If you're trying to cook a food which is a solid, you use the medium of water um, to cook it because it needs heat, which is the highest level, because heat is an energy source. So we have heat at the top, we have food at the bottom. One needs to uh, interact with the other, but we can't because they're so separate. So you put water in between. So the heat, the heat from the fire or the gas fire or the oven heats up the water, which heats up the food and so on. So it's a medium, it's the medium process of that, and that's what human beings are. It's the human consciousness that's the ability to perceive extreme views and the differences between in order to get a full comprehension of the world around them. And that's what I want you to look at today for this lesson for number three. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please like and subscribe and follow us on our journey into the next step of the Blueprint of the Universe. And if you do want more information on this, as this is quite a brief but kind of all-encompassing uh, video on the subject, then please head over to our website where there is also a book available about this um, individual topic. And uh, we can begin to expand your knowledge from there and hopefully uh, help you build your own concept of the universe around you. So for now, we are the blueprint of the universe. Hope you've been well and take care.